This video covers semantic role labeling. I'll first introduce feature-based semantic role labeling, and then turn to neural semantic role labeling before briefly discussing evaluation for this task. Semantic role labeling is the process of automatically assigning semantic roles to the arguments of different predicates in a sentence. It is generally performed using supervised machine learning methods, which are trained on resources like FrameNet and PropInk. Feature-based semantic role labeling is performed by first finding a parse tree for the input, perhaps using some of the methods we discussed in previous modules. The parse tree is traversed to identify all predicates, and for each of those predicates, the semantic role labeler iterates through each node in the parse tree and performs supervised classification to determine whether the node serves as a semantic role for the specified predicate, and if so, which role. Any standard classification algorithms and feature combinations can be used for this supervised classification process, and different classification algorithms and feature sets may work better depending on the specific application needs. In some cases, the node-level classifier might be broken down into multiple subtasks. First, it may prune constituents that are unlikely to serve as semantic roles using simple heuristics. Then, for remaining nodes, it may perform binary classification to determine whether a given node serves as a semantic role or not. Finally, for nodes labeled as semantic roles, it may perform more fine-grained classification to determine the semantic role for a given node. This process may lead to better performance, since certain features may be more useful for certain subtasks than others, as well as increased computational efficiency. It's important to remember that semantic roles in an input are not independent of one another. To address this, many semantic role labelers add an extra step to handle global consistency across predicted semantic role labels. They might do the second pass of the hypothesized labels using Viterbi decoding, re-ranking approaches, or integer linear programming to identify the solution that best fits with the given constraints. Given all this information, you may be wondering which features are commonly used for semantic role labeling. Some popular and high-performing features for the task are shown here. These features include the governing predicate, the phrase type of the constituent, the head word of the constituent, the part of speech label for that head word, the path in the parse tree from the constituent to the predicate, an indication of whether the language surrounding the constituent uses active or passive voice, an indication of whether the constituent appears before or after the predicate, the set of expected arguments for the verb phrase, the named entity type of the constituent, and the first and last words of the constituent. Sometimes people will also incorporate ingram features or more complex path features, or they'll use dependency parses rather than constituency parses as the basis for their features. So we've looked at feature-based semantic role labeling, Another common approach to modern semantic role labeling is to use neural methods. The most common strategy when using neural methods is to use a bidirectional LSTM model that performs biotagging. So you just sequentially move through the input and predict whether each token should have a begin tag, an inside tag, or an outside tag. And you can parameterize these tags with the different semantic role types. Generally, a pre-trained embedding is extracted for each token to be used as input to the model, along with a binary indicator of whether or not the token is a predicate. The binary indicator is concatenated with the embedding, and the input is passed sequentially through the multiple layers of the bidirectional LSTM, where the architecture may vary a bit depending on the specific approach. The output layer applies a softmax function to create a probability distribution over all semantic role labels, with the most likely tag for the input word being selected. An abstraction of what this would look like, reproduced and slightly modified from the course textbook, is shown here. Global optimization is still an issue in neural semantic role labeling, and simply using a softmax layer at the end of the model may not effectively handle global constraints. To address this issue, the softmax layer can be replaced with the CRF layer, and we can apply Viterbi decoding to find the optimal sequence of outputs. We can also apply Viterbi decoding directly to the softmax output, treating the distribution over tags as a lattice and the known tag constraints or other learned tag constraints as the transition probabilities. 
So far, we've learned how to develop both feature-based and neural semantic role labelers. However, how do we determine whether these semantic role labelers are doing a good job? To evaluate semantic role labeling, we typically check to make sure that each argument label is assigned to the correct word sequence or parse constituent. Based on that information, we can compute our standard NLP metrics, precision, recall, and F measure.